Hey, my name's Barry Frame. I'm one of the Sim Production Lecturers here at Fife College and welcome back to another Pro Tools Micro Lecture. In this lecture we're going to be looking at how to import audio, import MIDI files and import video files into your Pro Tools session. We'll look at the different ways you can import these and the different options that are available. So we'll get stuck in. Okay, so here we've got our Pro Tools session open. Um, I've just called this import because we're going to be talking about import, uh, importing different bits of audio, MIDI and video. So, as I say, the one way to get audio into Pro Tools is recording it. However, in our way we can do it, we can actually import um, a piece of recorded audio already. So, let's go through that process. If I go to File, and down to Import, I then get five different options here. Session Data, Audio, MIDI, Video, and Clip Groups. We're looking to import some audio. So I select that. We now get the Import Audio dialog box. And you basically navigate here until you find what you're looking for. So I'm going to go to what well, we import some music. Um, I'll see some iTunes, iTunes Media, Music, Silver Kings, now known as the Dirty Martinis. Uh, step on, right, okay, okay. Now, the minute I select that audio file here, you will notice that it comes up here. So there we go, step on, then it'd be three. Usually I would be important WAV, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And up here will tell you everything you need to know about that file. So, the file type is a quick time. Uh, the length is 4 minutes 34 seconds. Um, the size of the file is 5.2 meg. Uh, bit depth is 16th, uh, 16. Sample rate is 48, which is strange. And the channels, it's got two channels, which tells me it's got a left channel and a right channel. Now, what we can do with this file is we can add the file to the session um, or it's asking us do you want to convert now as our session because this is technically a music session we've got set up um, this session is 44.1 um, by 24 bit so I want to convert this okay now this is going to convert this audio to the current session so when I hit on convert as simple as that. Clips to import, that is now converted from 16 bit 48 to 24 bit 44.1. So, we can do this with multiple um, audio clips, okay? But just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to show you the one. So, once we're happy with that, we go down to done. Now, it's asking us, right, okay, where would you like to? to save this particular audio file and by default the audio files folder that is in the actual main Pro Tools folder should appear and you don't need to touch anything all we have to do is click open and there we go it is now processing that audio now we are going to get another box up here in a minute right so it's given us two options here it's saying Right, okay, we can import this audio and it, Pro Tools will automatically create a new track or we can save it to the clips list. The clips list being all the way over here, if I expand this out a little bit. If I won't let me expand just now because I've got this box open. But basically we can expand this and we can just save it in there and we can drag our clips from here. And again, I'll give you a wee example of that in a couple of seconds. So, just for the time being now, I just want to create a new track. Click OK. And there we go. Now, you probably notice Pro Tools has also named the track the name of the file that you imported. Step on. Yep, yeah, there we go. Now, because we've created a new track, what Pro Tools will automatically do is store this in the clips list. Now we could have, if I just delete this track now, 
Now, we could have, if we selected the import to clips list option, it would have looked exactly like this. And what we could have simply done is take this and drag it on our timeline, and then move it to where we want it to be. And again, we get the same result. So, that is important audio, okay? So we can do that with maybe sound effects, um, bits of music, with our mastering, um, yeah, different things we can import there, okay? Uh, different types of audio. Now, important video is a very similar process, okay? We go up to file, we go into import, and we select video. From the video uh, import navigation box, we select the video we want. So I'll just select one at random here, what we got. That's a Pro Tools tutorial that I was working on. Uh, we select that video and we click open. Now, we get presented with this uh, options box. It's asking us, right, okay, would you like to import the audio from the video or not import the audio? What I like to do, I always like to import the audio with the video as it, as it gives me reference to what was on the video. Uh, that can be quite handy, maybe for, syn for syncing up a particular sound, uh, a bit of music or dialogue, whatever. So I'll always click that. Once we're happy with that, we then click OK. Now, before it lets us view the video, it's asking us whereabouts would you like to save your audio file? So again, by default, the audio files folder, which is contained within the main session folder, is automatically selected. So we don't need to do nothing here, we just select, uh, select open. And the video's processing. And this is us, got our video here. Now again, we can resize this video. Just be going to the corner and shrink up a little bit. And we can kind of tuck away in the corner so we that way when when as we're working we can view what's going on. Now, something really important to note when you're importing a video. If you go to the video track on your edit window, you'll see 30 FPS. FPS stands for frames per second. Now, this is telling us that the video that we've just imported is 30 frames per second. However, our session is not set up for that. So, we're going to have to change our Pro Tools session. Very easy change. How we do this is we go into the Setup menu. We go down to Session. This is going to give us all our kind of a session parameters. And over to the right-hand side where it says Time Code Rate, we want to change that number from 25 to whatever number is there. So change the number, whatever it is there, it says 25 in this instance, and we go down to 30, and watch what happens to uh, the, the red text with the minute I click this. It turns white. That tells us that our video has now got the same frames per second as our session, or rather the session has now got the same frame rate as the video. So again, if I play this... ...was here at Fife College, and we... Yeah, that's working. Now, so that's video. Now, pr probably not in your first project, but certainly uh, in the second project, and definitely in the third, you are going to uh, begin working with MIDI. Now again, I won't go into too much what MIDI is. Um, again, we'll, we'll do that more in class time. What I'm going to show you is how to import a particular MIDI file. Now, I'm going to give you a great tip here. We can import MIDI files absolutely free. Or sorry, we can download MIDI files from the internet for absolutely free. So if I go down to my internet browser here, I've already got, I typed into Google, free MIDI files. So let's go to this one here, MIDI files free download. So I can pick any one of these, what one we go with? We'll go with a bit of Sweet Child of Mine. Um, Sweet Child of Mine, there we go. I can download these. 
hit and download and yeah there we go there it's saved in there now that I've downloaded a MIDI file I can now import that to my Pro Tools session again the exact same way file import and this time MIDI if I go to my downloads folder there we go Guns N' Roses we click open we then get other import options so it's asking us again would you like to create a new track in this case it's going to select it's going to create an instrument track for us okay an instrument track basically allows us to place an instrument a virtual instrument so the MIDI can play that instrument um, or again we can save it to the clip list I don't want to do that I just want to put it into the instrument track now it's also saying like, look we can import other bits of information we can import the tempo map from the MIDI file I think that's pretty handy and also the key signature which is going to be handy if you're playing with a musician or you're trying to create other bits of music to go along with this once you're happy with that we select OK and there we go we just get this big load of kind of a dots everywhere and what these dots represent is different notes um, on a keyboard so again if I was to call up uh, an instrument let's get a look so I've got my inserts down to instrument and let's see I'll open up expand expand is one of the, the virtual instruments again there is going to be an art tutorial um, purely on uh, instruments and how to set them up etc so I'm just going to quickly do this to show you so I'm looking for guitar there we go and obviously it's slash sweet child of mine so we're looking for a nice heavy distorted guitar let's see what we have there we go but we'll go with this dirty lead too we'll see what like that sounds so now that that's been selected you'll now notice that my clip is no longer greyed out it's now blue and when I hit play that is now triggering this instrument now don't get me wrong I know the the MIDI or the, rather the instrument can sometimes sound a bit mm, not up to much however if you if we were to play about with these um, different if we were to play about with these different parameters then we could make that sound sound a lot better but again there will be an art tutorial video on that cool right that's us for another micro lecture um, I hope that made sense. As always, you can email me at barryframe at fife.ac.uk uh, and if you've got any questions, myself or any other guys in sound production, we'll be happy to help you. We also like to hear what you guys think, so it's really important for you to give us a bit of feedback and just feel free um, to contact us for that. So I'll see you again. Cheers. Cheers.